Hey everyone, Jason here, aspiring entrepreneur and digital marketing consultant. And in this video, you're gonna learn a simple four quadrant system for keeping your Google Drive organized. And this is specifically designed for entrepreneurs, freelancers, and digital agency owners. So even if you're just getting started right now and it's just you, you're a one man or woman show, go ahead and continue watching this video because setting this up is going to save you a lot of time and headache because it's going to ensure that all of your files are in the right place and you never have to remember where a file is and it's going to help you scale in the future as you begin to bring people onto your team and grow your business. So we'll start by going over what these four quadrants are and then we will jump over to my actual Google Drive and I will show you how this plays out in real life. And so we're not gonna just do pie in the sky stuff. I'm actually going to walk you through all of the folders I actually have set up and the structure that we use as a team every single day servicing clients and creating digital products and courses. So the four quadrants that we have here are team, content, sales funnel, and product. And before I move on, don't forget there is a timestamp table of content in the description, so you feel free to jump around or come back to this video for specific points. And first up, we have the team quadrant. And so the team quadrant is everything that's internal. Even if it's just you right now, again, you wanna start using the structure so you can easily bring people on in the future and scale and grow your business by hiring a team. So in this, you're going to have administrative files, management files, and other like tax and legal things, all of the boring stuff <laughs> that goes with starting a business and growing a business business along with anything that you need to communicate internally or train yourself or future team members. So for example, when I was just a one person show, I would have email templates. I would have Excel templates that I had for clients or when I was servicing clients or creating different courses. And so I'd put all of that information into these folders. So I always knew exactly where kind of all of my personal notes and all that administrative uh, jargon was there. So the next quadrant we have is content. And this is where we get a little more fun. So these are all of the content pieces and assets that you create for different platforms. You know, personally, we do blogging, YouTube and Instagram, but really any any platform you're doing Pinterest or Twitter or Facebook, you know, you'd go ahead and create folders for those individual platforms. And so when you create content for those platforms, you know that, hey, you know, I recorded a YouTube video or hey, I did a Instagram post and I forget where it picture I was supposed to use, you know exactly where to go for all these folders and so does your team when you eventually have one. And next we have the sales funnel quadrant. And in the sales funnel folders, this is everything that deals with selling your product or service, whatever that product or service may be. So this is all your sales copy, your funnel scripts, your advertising, tracking codes, you know, for your different platforms, any sales assets. And there are two different ways I've seen to be effective organizing this. And this is something that we still kind of go back and forth on as a team as well. But I've seen it really effective if you only have really one product or service then it makes a whole lot of sense to organize this by the platform or traffic source that you're advertising. If you have multiple products or services, or you're not quite sure what your big offer is yet, then organizing it by product or the funnel that it is, is a great way to go. Again, we'll jump into my drive and I'll show you two different examples of that. And finally, we have the product folder, or it could be product slash services. And this is where all of your deliverables for your actual product or service go. So for example, if you're writing an ebook or you're creating a course, this is where you would keep all of that ebook and, and course files, your raw notes of putting those together, the actual files of the finished product. Or if you're a services-based business, then you'd have your client files in here, your client deliverables. Maybe if you're a coach or you have some coaching students, you have notes or files for your coaching students in here. So this is just a kind of quick summary. We're going to dive into the drive in a second. However, I did want to add one more folder before we dive into Google Drive, and that is the collection box. And so inside of each one of these big folders or just inside of your entire Google Drive, it's a really good idea to create something called a collection box. And this allows you and anyone else you hire or anyone else on your team, any business partner, if they don't understand your system yet or they're not quite sure where to put something, they can put it in the collection box. And so this is a great way to ensure that things never get put in the wrong 
place because one of the worst things that can happen is you create this great system or you make your own system based upon what you're seeing in this video right now and then people start putting things in random places or they don't put them in the right spot and then you're kind of back to where you started with I don't know where the file is so this kind of prevents that I don't know where the file is if someone's not quite sure you're not quite sure yet or you're just too busy to organize things just put it in the collection box you know it's there it's going to be a mess but it's kind of like giving yourself permission to have one messy spot in your Google Drive while everything else is sparkly and clean so this is just kind of a quick overview of what we've gone through so far so now we're gonna jump over to my Google Drive and we're actually going to walk through how I've organized and structured everything in my drive so this is what my Google Drive looks like. You can see I have team, then I actually mix it up a little bit. I have aspiring entrepreneur, act marketing, media asset library, library, swipe file, public folders, and then X old projects. So we'll go through all but two of these and then I'll dive into two details. So the first thing I have is the team folder. And something I've done differently is because I have a YouTube channel and a personal website and I have a small marketing agency, I've actually broken those two pieces of my business up because while there is some overlap, they are accomplishing different things. So that's why you see aspiring entrepreneur and act marketing, but I'll go through that in a second. So the first folder that we have is the team folder. So inside of the team folder, all I have is individual team files. And inside these individual team files, this allows people like myself and other people on the team to have a folder that's specifically for them. So if I were to click on this, you'd see all of our names. And inside of that, that's just where we get to put our personal stuff that we're working on, or maybe we're midway through a project that's not ready to be shared with the rest of the team or shared with the client. That's where we can put it. And so it kind of gives everyone their own little collection box that isn't being shared with the rest of the team. Then we have tax and legal documents. That's just all the boring stuff. And that's all there is in the main team drive. You'll see that I actually have multiple team folders. And so Aspiring Entrepreneur Act Marketing, we'll get to that in a second. Next, we have Media Asset Library. So one of the unique things that I found to be really helpful as I went through the process of putting this together was putting all of the media assets in one place. So this is all of the pictures, all of the videos, all of the B-roll shots that we take, the screen captures, PowerPoints, even WordPress plugins. I just put all of them in here, regardless of what project or part of the business they relate to. And because we use Google Drive, we pay $10 a month per user and we have unlimited storage, we're able to be a little more flexible and not as frugal with our space. What we do is we have every single file that we use that's a media asset in here. And if it applies to a specific project, we will just copy that file and put it in that project folder. So if you're limited on space, it's probably something you don't wanna do, but it's definitely worth just taking that extra step because now we never lose any media assets. So if someone creates a really awesome graphic Everyone else on the team can go here. They can see it, they know it's there. And even though it might be duplicated in three or four other places, it just makes it easier for everyone to see where all the at media assets are and put them in their individual folders for themselves. So if you have to be frugal with space, definitely don't recommend doing that. So the next one we have is the library. And so the library just represents all of the courses or trainings that we've purchased either for myself or my team. And so this is just kind of what I use to make sure that I never lose course files that I've purchased. So whenever I download something, I'll just leave it in the library and then I give access to team members as needed. Swipe file, this is something that's going to be a folder that you definitely want to set up. I think 9.9 .9 out of 10 entrepreneurs I talk to don't have a swipe file set up. And a swipe file is pretty much you taking screenshots or copying and storing your competitor's marketing. So if you're scrolling through Facebook and you see a ad from a competitor or somebody else in your space, go ahead and take a screenshot of that. And that's where I save all these things. You can see I save Instagram ads, I save YouTube ads, I save entire sales letters. Sometimes I'll go through an entire sales funnel and I'll put all of those here so that when we do go to make a sales funnel later or we're making something for a client later, everyone can come to this folder and see examples. And it actually speeds up the process because we're a digital marketing agency. It actually speeds up our process for creating marketing for people because we're always actively building 
building our swipe file. So even if you're not doing this for clients, you definitely want to build a swipe file for yourself. And finally, we have public folders. And the reason I like having this folder set up is because it makes sure that we never accidentally publish something that's supposed to be kept private. So this is the only folder in our entire Google Drive where we make files publicly available. And I'll get to how we manage client files in a second, but this is if a file is being shared with anyone other than someone on the team or a client, it goes somewhere in this folder and that just makes sure nothing is ever accidentally published to the web or something confidential is accidentally shared with someone it's not supposed to be. And this is especially important if you're dealing with client files. So that kind of goes over all of the folders and then X is just old projects, old stuff that doesn't really matter anymore. I just put it there and let it be. So now let's go ahead and I'm gonna jump into the aspiring entrepreneur and I'm going to kind of walk through the basics of how we keep everything organized using those four quadrants. So you can see we have our collection box. Again, we have another team folder. And so inside of the aspiring entrepreneur brand, we have a team folder because this applies to everything that has to do with the YouTube channel, my Instagram account, and my personal stuff, not necessarily all of the client work or agency marketing. And so inside of team, we have an administrative. Again, we have individual team files because someone could be on the aspiring entrepreneur team and not necessarily on the act marketing team. And so that's why we have two different, I've set up two different ones. And then we have content team, sales funnel team, product team, and then we have analytics and dashboards. I'll figure out someday <laughs> where uh, the all of those should go. So that's why we have analytics and dashboards. Again, it's it's not always perfect. So this means anyone who's on the content team doing sales funnel or product stuff, all of the training and documentation and templates are in these individual folders. So next we have content. Again, content is broken down by the platform for each content. And one of the things we wound up starting to do, particularly with YouTube and Instagram, is because we've had so many videos and we've done so many images, it started to take up a lot lot of space on people's hard drives. So we actually created an archive where we take all of the old videos and files and we put them there. And then using selective sync, we only sync the YouTube folder to our drive so that we're only looking at the current content. That's just a great way, especially if you're using a MacBook that doesn't have a whole lot of space on it. It's a great way to split things up so you can keep yourself updated with everything, but you don't have all of your files trying to be synced at once. And next we have sales funnel. So in this instance, we've broken down the sales funnel based upon the product or service that's being offered. So we give each funnel a code, and then you can kind of just see here, each one of these represents all of the content that goes into creating that sales funnel for that product. And finally, we have products, and this is just where we store all of the course files. So in this particular instance, all of the coaching student notes are in here, all of the videos and the templates and the downloads for the authority builder or the act agency level one or the aspire notebook, they're all in here. And if we publish anything to the actual course, so let's say inside the membership website, we're providing downloads or, or links, we use the public folders product folder to do that. So even though it's doubling up, it's making sure that we're always keeping what's published and what's internal separate. So under this product one, you'll see Authority Builder, you see Aspire Notebook, you'll see all the products. But here in the public folder, we know that this is something that's been published inside of the members area. And so that's what members have access to. Whereas in here, these are just all of the raw notes, all of the raw files. So if we ever need to update something, we go to the public folders and make sure that file's updated for everyone. And so that's kind of the basics. The only other thing I wanted to point out here is I added this emoji because you can actually add emojis to your folder name. So if you like emojis or you want to kind of help organize your drive using different emojis, you can. You can just head over to getemoji.com and you can copy any one of these and add them into the file name of your folder. So let's go ahead and go back to Google Drive. There we go. And now what I wanna do, this is gonna be specifically for agency and client style work. What I just went through is kind of like what a 
Google Drive looks like if you're doing digital products. So if you're doing services, then this is what's going to be much more applicable to you. Act Marketing, again, collection box, team is the same, content is the same, sales funnel is the same. What's really different is the products and services section. So what we do in here is we have a client onboarding folder where we have videos that go through how to do basic things. So for example, when we're getting set up with someone's ad account, we need them to be able to add their payment method. We need them to approve access to their Facebook account. So all of these client tutorials we put in the client onboarding section, and then we have a specific folder called client files. I won't click on it because it'll all be blurred out, but underneath client files is where we have all of the individual clients files in a folder just for them. And inside that folder is where we share individual files with the client only. Again, if it's more than just a team member or client, we're gonna use a public folder to do it. But if we're sharing it with a specific client and a specific team inside that client's company, then we'll go ahead and use their individual client folder for things back and forth. And then client onboarding, we share those videos with specific clients as well, which is why we don't put it in the public folders. So this has been quite a lengthy <laughs> tutorial video, but I hope this kind of gives you a picture of what is possible for you and your Google Drive, even if you're just getting started, where you can use these ba four basic quadrants to really make sure that you lay a strong foundation for keeping yourself organized because there's nothing worse than getting held back when you're trying to scale quickly because you're trying to organize years and years of files where if you just get started with the system now, you're definitely going to be happy that you did and your future team is going to be happy that you did when you begin to scale in the future. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button and then subscribe because over on the channel, I'm documenting the entire process of what it takes to build a online business from scratch. And of course, organizing your Google Drive, as boring as that may seem, is a pretty big chunk of what it takes to be successful because I've seen a lot of internal client Google Drives and they are an absolute mess. So it's really hard to push forward and grow your business when you don't have a solid system for staying organized and bringing people on so they can be effective and successful. So go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions and hit that like button, subscribe, and as always, keep building the business you love. Take care.